it is a video on two-way slab uh, so let me start with some introduction for one-way slab you can check the description for the link to the video uh, when a slab is supported on all four edges or sides we can call it as a two-way slab in general term okay but for the specific definition I will go through the uh, numerical explanation for two-way slab ly by lx or the ratio of length along longer side to shorter side should be less or equal to 2 we know from uh, for two uh, ly by lx that is the ratio of length along x and y should be less or equal to 2 the load carried by the uh, both axes are comparable okay that means from uh, this is from the Rankine's uh, grasshopper theory as I've already done a video on the Rankine grasshopper theory you can check in uh, my channel so for which we assume the ratio of length in y and x as a term r constant r so total weight w is equal to wx plus wy that is the load distributed along x and y axis respectively and considering wx as the same but replacing wy in terms of w then we get wx plus w1 divided by 1 plus r4 and taking wx to the left hand side and w in the right hand side we get w r to the power 4 plus divided by 1 plus r to the power 4 suppose ly is equal to lx that means the value of r is equal to 1 then in such case substituting the value of r as 1 in wx in the equation then we get 0.5 w and w is equal to 0.5 w that is the load is distributed equally in both axes so it is comparable or the load distribution is comparable now let us assume if ly is equal to 2 lx then r is equal to 2 and wx is equal to 0.941 w and wy is equal to 0.058 times of w which is somehow comparable now if we continue to increase the value of ly such that ly is equal to 3 lx uh, then r is equal to 3 wx is equal to 0.98 w and l wy is equal to 0 0.012 w which is not comparable because 98 percent of weight is being distributed in x axis and only 1.2 percentage of weight is being distributed into y axis so how we can say it as a comparable so the two-way slab is only possible or we can term a slab as a two-way when the load distribution along both axes is comparable hence reinforcement has to be provided in both axes but in case of one-way slab only the main reinforcement was provided in shorter side hence for the two-way slab ly by lx less or equal to 2 the load is carried or distributed to both axes x and y where for the one-way slab the load was carried along the shorter axis only as you can find in when the value of uh, r is 3 we can find wx as 0.98 w that is about 98 percent of load x on the shorter axis when the value of or the when the length along longer side is quite three times that of the shorter side okay for two-way slab basically 10 conditions of boundaries arises this can be found in the table from the code is456 on the table 2627 is456 annex d okay this is the annex d and slab is spanning in two direction we have 10 cases as you can see here now let us see what is the boundary condition so we have a plan of the slab so all four edges continuous so this is the the one number one is the interior panel similarly one short is discontinuous okay considering this as the short edge, we have one edge as discontinuous and other edges are continuous 
similarly for one long edge discontinuous number 3 the longer edge is discontinuous and the other edges are continuous two adjacent edges con discontinuous in this one short edge one long edge is discontinuous in the number 4 similarly for number 5 we have two short edges discontinuous as you can see here the two short edges are discontinuous in number 5 okay and similarly in 6 two longer edges are discontinuous similarly you can find out for 7 8 9 okay 7 we have three edges discontinuous 8 also we have three edges discontinuous and one short edge continuous four edges discontinuous but corner held down by providing torsional reinforcement so this is a simply supported but there is a provision of torsional reinforcement but in the other we have no torsional reinforcement now if i make a uh, plan of a slab so i'll try to make you understand what continuous and what discontinuous means okay so two slabs okay now this is the joint we can say like continuous this is the discontinuous edge because there is no connection between any adjacent slab in this direction okay so that is what a continuous and discontinuous means there should be a connection between the slabs then it will be a continuous one okay now let us see here so this will be the exact shape of this one okay so these are the slab and with the beam at the edges you can say so there is a continuation you can see here of the bars so this will be a continuous slab because there is a continuous bar at this edge now continuous condition if continuous section occurs moment at the support must be considered and is negative at support okay the moment at the edges are negative hence moments are our moment at mid span and supports are calculated with respect to moment coefficient or we can say the moment is incorporated with moment coefficients alpha x plus alpha x minus alpha y plus and alpha y minus respectively okay plus represents moment at uh, mid span and negative represents the edges moment at edge or support and x and y are the respective axis so let me show uh, the diagram okay so we can see here for the case okay we have this as the negative and this is the positive okay support and mid span we have mx and my from here which is the bending moment alpha x and alpha y are the moment coefficient which is given from table 27 so this is the table uh, we will be looking for now let us write the formula mx is equal to alpha x w l x square similarly my is equal to alpha y omega w l y l x square okay we have to consider the shorter direction for the effective length but keep alpha x and alpha y respectively in moment along x and y direction now uh, yeah alpha y for alpha x we have to interpolate it for the ratio of l y by l x and alpha y are provided with respect to the 
boundary condition whether it is a interior panel or one shot is discontinuous long span coefficient which is for the alpha y can be taken directly from the for the corresponding cases but for a shorter span we have to interpolate let me discuss about torsion reinforcement for discontinuous edges torsional reinforcement or torsion reinforcement is to be provided at uh, corners which or where two edges uh, become discontinuous okay so it is a two layer of reinforcement mesh okay that means along x and y axis both top at top and at bottom of the slab corners okay with required cover of concrete uh, let us discuss the, the designing of the torsion reinforcement length of the torsional bar or reinforcement is equal to 1 by 5 times of the shorter effective span okay along the x axis and the area of reinforcement required for the torsion reinforcement is equal to 3 by 4 times of the minimum steel area required for that slab on which the torsion reinforcement is to be provided similarly spacing of bars is equal to 4 by 3 times the spacing of the bars at mid span now let me make it clear about the uh, purpose of providing torsion reinforcement uh, let us draw a slab supported on all four edges that is a two-way slab and a vertical load acting downward then the deflected shape of this slab will be something like this and this is for a simply supported slab all the edges are discontinuous now in such case the deflected shape of slab is something like this and for a continuous slab the deflected shape will be something like this because this is the discontinuous edge but all other edges will have the same shape under the deflection so the torsion reinforcement are to be provided at the discontinuous edge to held down the corners let us go to the design procedure okay this was the theoretical portion now let us go to the design procedure we have the very first step from serviceability condition that is the deflection criteria let us find the depth d okay as in the uh, case of the one-way slab using the ratio of length by depth okay clear span l is the length of shorter side always consider the shorter side in the slab uh, in also mat foundation also we have to consider the shorter side lx by d is equal to 28 30 or 32 depending upon the cases for the all edges or uh, all four edges discontinuous that is a simply supported case we have to go for 28 for two edges or we can say yeah for two edges discontinuous and two edges continuous 30 and for all edges continuous that is a uh, interior panel the ratio of span to depth is to be taken as 32 three edges discontinuous okay this is the condition you have to understand while solving a numerical for three edges discontinuous also take 28 and for three edges continuous take 32 okay whenever there is a combination of two edges continuous and two edges discontinuous then only take the average of 28 and 32 that is 30 for second step is find the effective length along both axis x and y in this case both the uh, length are necessary for determining the moment from the IS456 okay class 22.2. okay 0 p 34 calculate total load acting 
in the slab including the self weight of the concrete or slab make sure you take the overall depth not the effective depth while calculating the total self weight calculate the maximum bending moment and shear force the difference is this in this step okay in one way slab we just calculate a one moment but in this case we have to calculate uh, two moments for each axis that is at the support and at the mid span similarly check step number five check depth d for maximum bending moment we will have four moments and among them the maximum one is checked with the depth step six calculate area of steel ast step seven check for shear okay whether the slab is safe in shear or not and this is taken from or uh, considering from the class 40 table 19 step 8 check for deflection criteria okay clause uh, 23.2.1 page 37 step 9 check for development length the development length is necessary to transfer the stress from steel to concrete and this is taken from clause 26.2.1 and 3.3 c similarly step 10 for torsion if necessary okay if the corner are to be held down then uh, reinforcement torsion reinforcement has to be provided